Morning gang. Did you know that there was once an independent anarchist republic island off of the coast of Estonia, very close to Tallinn? Uh, no? Well, today let's go and explore the island of Nysar, which once was the Soviet Republic of Nysar. Let's go and have a look. Okay, so I am here on the island of Nysa. National holiday today. The ferry was pretty busy. It left at 10 a.m. and people were queuing up for beers on the ferry. People were pounding beers, shots. It was not also a completely smooth crossing. It was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty choppy. Hey, let's walk on this wonderful bit of train track here. So yes, I'm on the island of Nysar, which has been many things. It was a Swedish island, like some of the others that we've had a look at. It was a, an island predominantly inhabited by Estonian coastal Swedes. And then it was a naval army, military, let's say, base. And then it was its own anarchist republic for about three months, which I guess is kind of why we're here, because that's interesting. The Soviet Republic, pre the Soviet Union, before the Soviet Union, but still declared itself to be a Soviet. The Soviet of sailors and builders. I'll correct that in the edit. The, the Soviet of sailors and builders I believe and yeah was independent for three or four months and in the lead up in the lead up to I guess the Soviet Union becoming a real thing and then ultimately a couple of years later towards a re revolt rebellion I guess on the island of Kronstadt some of the, the indeed the leaders of the anarchist insurgency and anarchist republic here went on to lead the rebellion at the battle at the uprising of Kronstadt which is just outside St Petersburg yeah okay all right okay so after that it was again a Soviet military base and yeah I'm hoping we will see some Soviet military stuff technical term. All right. Oi oi. What have we here? One of the main reasons to come to Nysar is that you can just wander around and explore abandoned Soviet military buildings, like this one, at your leisure. No guides, no health and safety, just have a wander around, just crack on and explore. If you like old Soviet machinery, buildings, equipment, military bases, cool, this is paradise. This place is full of bits and pieces, ruins. Look at all these, it's just old boxes. Lots of stuff here that would have been relics. This train track leads into here. Let's have a little look. During World War II, the island became a Soviet military base and was closed off until the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. During this time, 
the island produced marine mines in this factory and the narrow gauge train track was used to transport the mines and equipment from factories to the port. After Estonia regained independence in 1991, it started the process of demilitarising the island and turning it into a nature reserve. In order to do this, it needed to deal with over 5,000 pieces of weaponry and explosives left over, including mines from the mine factory. Now that process has finished, and so that's why they're cool with the general public wandering around former Soviet heavy weapons factories, I guess. Nice one, Estonia. Tons and tons of asbestos there. Bucket of nails. One of the many paths takes you along some of the huge amount of former railway lines through the forest, past rows and rows of abandoned buildings, which are now just filled with smashed up asbestos. But eventually you come out on the coast to glimpse yet another beautiful Soviet site. Hey look, Lada Neva, view of Tallinn in the background, beautiful. So after seeing what I could of the southern part of the island, I jumped back on the ferry to Tallinn, where I would dash off to the train station to head towards Tartu, so I could go to another very different island. But that's for next time. See you then.